Hello everyone, welcome to the part 7 of this tutorial. So in the last video we've done some stuff with the register user and uh, we were able to generate a GWT token. Now in this video what we want to do is to put the current user from this GWT token inside the context and uh, so this way we're going to be able to use the user for um, uh, everything else. For example, we want to stop uh, some uh, requests if the user is not authenticated. Or, example, we want uh, to be able to use uh, the user ID when he create uh, a to do. And this way, we're going to be able to fetch each to do for this current user. So, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to continue where we get in the last video. So, uh, we were able from a user. Uh, to generate a token but now the thing is how can we access this token so what I mean by that it's example if I go and I register a new user I'm gonna say Bob 11 and username Bob 11 now I get this access token so I can take that the thing it's now if I want to use this token and do something here uh, we cannot do like we don't know which user is gonna be because right now we do not parse this uh, token and we do not verify then this token is a valid one so this is what we're gonna do so for that we're gonna jump back on the uh, domain out okay and what we're gonna need to do is adding uh, a way to extract the token from the request object uh, the request other object so for that what we're gonna do it's we're gonna create a new function so I think I'm gonna put that here at the bottom and we're gonna have a function here called street strip bearer prefix from token here that's gonna be one function we're gonna create and also we're gonna have another we're gonna have two variable called out header extractor who this one's gonna be uh, re sorry, a request uh, pose extractor filter. This is coming from uh, the GWT uh, Go uh, package we installed last uh, last video. And we can have another one here called var out extractor. This one is going to be a request multi extractor. And finally. We're gonna create another function called parse token. Sorry, it's not my keyboard. I'm just move uh, this week and I don't have my real keyboard. So perfect. So what all those functions gonna do? Okay. So here we're gonna start with the out other extractor. Okay. So the post extraction filter is an extractor. Finally, we're gonna take uh, uh, the header. Uh, and finally get the thing we want. So example here, we want the extractor to become a request dot header extractor. And now here we just need to pass the value. You see, he finally take a slice of string, extract uh, the token from a header, look at each specified header in order until they are a match. For us, we know we always want the user to use the authorization. So what that means, it's when we're going to use inside Postman, this is the key they want here. So the way that works, it's that going to go in order. So example, here if I have, a, I don't know, like a Bob, they're going to search for authorization first, but if they don't find it, they're going to search for a Bob one. But yeah, we're going to be able to just do what we want with just authorization. After that here, they need a filter method. So the filter method here is going to be a function who's going to finally take a string and return a string error, okay? A string error right there. So for that, this is where we're going to pass our strip prefix from token. Now, this one need to receive the token as a string and returning like we did just see, string or an error. Now here, they don't like it because we don't return nothing else, uh, right now. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable here called bearer, who's going to be bearer like that. Bearer. So 
So by convention, convention, what I do when I use a GWT, it's always prefix that with bearer. And now here, what I want to do, is I want to make sure that in Postman or whatever client gonna use, we're gonna have this bearer right there first uh, before uh, having the token. And I want bearer like that. So what that means, it's first thing, I'm gonna look at the length of the token, okay? I want to make sure that the length of the token is going to be bigger than the length of the bearer because that don't make any sense if the token is less because if you have bearer in front of it that mean for sure you're going to become bigger than that after that what i'm going to do okay i remember why i did that like that one sec like this and yes if that don't work that uh, good like that it's because i use my keyboard of my MacBook Pro and as everyone know it's not the best one <laughs> so here what I'm gonna do it's I'm gonna upper case the token I'm gonna receive okay this token here to make sure that it match from the character number zero to the land of the bearer so example in this case gonna be six I want to make sure that this thing this thing match bearer like that so if you follow what I've done it's so first thing here this check is just about I don't want to go further if what we have is not bigger than this bearer because that means nothing uh, like for sure it's not gonna work okay and I want to finally remove the, pre pre the bearer prefix from the token so after that here, I want to make sure then the, from the token, the character is zero to the end of the land bearer. So to zero to six, because six of character, it's equal to bearer. If this is that, I want to return the token with the land bearer, but I want the plus one and I want everything at the end and I want to return nil. So here that mean give me everything after bearer. So here in this case, if we have something like that, give me everything after that, plus one with this space, that's it. And everything else like that is gonna be what we pass. Finally, if we don't have the bearer, for sure you can say hey, it's not valid like that. But for our app, we're gonna just say, we don't need to strip the bearer prefix. So we are okay with that. After that, this var out extractor will take the mix extractor. It just it take finally the extractor and they go in order to take the the token. And we're gonna just pass the one we just create. Uh, this one right there. I'm gonna put a comma because in Go you need a comma uh, uh, for the inside. Like you need a comma here at the end because if not, this is the kind of error you're gonna get. They call that trailing comma. Okay, after that here, this parse token function, you're gonna take an HTTP request like that. And here what we want to return, it's a GWT token. So this is from the GWT uh, library or an error, okay? And this thing here, what we're gonna do, is we want to take the token from the request, parse from request, where we pass finally the request. After that, we need to pass the extractor. So we're gonna use the uh, extractor we just created here. After that here, we gonna have, a, uh, you see like we need like a function right there. So that's gonna be a function where we're gonna get this token. I'm gonna call that T because we have already this one here. After that, we're gonna have an interface. I don't want to name them. So I'm gonna do like that. So what I mean is here we're gonna receive, it's kind of like a callback where we're gonna have a token right there who's gonna be this uh, type of a pointer token where we're gonna return uh, an, inter an empty interface or an error. Now here what I'm gonna do, it's I'm gonna take uh, a slice of byte from my OS get env. So now, we, so what we're gonna do, it's a slice of byte right there, where we're gonna get, finally, just our GWT secret from uh, the uh, environment variable. 
uh, environment file and finally this is this is a secret and I just forget I need to source my env just to make sure perfect and now finally when we have this uh, slice of byte what we're gonna return it's this we're gonna return that and nil so here it just finally uh, some option you want to transform it and stuff like that so it's kind of uh, nothing, nothing crazy uh, for, for sure, I'm gonna just so finally you see they go with the claim and everything and they take your function right there. So, and after that, here finally, when we get the token, we just finally uh, return the token or nil uh, like that, uh, or the error, sorry, like this. So, we're gonna know if we have an error or not right there. Now, if you want to use it, what we're gonna do is gonna be pretty simple, okay? So, if you remember in node. We create middleware for that, uh, and this is nothing different. This is what we're gonna do in this one also. So the plan now is to just create finally a middleware where we're gonna get this function uh, and pass the user in, uh, to the uh, contact. I'm gonna just change the parse token here to become our per case, so you're gonna be uh, exportable. And now if we go to handler user, this is where we're going to put that. So we're going to create a function who's going to be bind to the server struct and we're going to create that with user, okay? I like to prefix my uh, middleware with width, like that. And this one, because it's going to be a middleware, we're going to have this HTTP handler like that with the next. And finally here we're going to return an in HTTP handler func uh, and love func sorry where this one gonna have a function where we're gonna have the HTTP response writer and this is not a pointer sorry for that and we're gonna have the pointer of the request if I can type like that now here what we're gonna do it's first thing we want to get the token from uh, the domain oh, I didn't pass it to the domain like that but now I can have it from the token parse token like that if we have an error I'm gonna return a unitarize response with the debug w and I'm gonna return now you may be asked okay what is this thing is done not done yet we're gonna just jump in the handler and we're gonna create the same thing as this one, but we're gonna call that unitarize response. And this one, the way that's gonna work is gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna use here status uh, um, we want for one uh, unitarize. Yeah, uh, unitarize, perfect. And for the response here, what we're going to say is unitarize, like that. This is what we're going to return. And now we're going to change the one we sent here because I don't want uppercase. And, uh, and I don't want an error. Like that. After that, here we're going to check the claim. Okay, so the claim is what we're gonna pass to this GWT, okay? And if you remember, when we gen the token, the claim we did pass was the ID and the expired date. So for now, here what we're gonna do, is we're gonna look at the token claims, and now we're gonna map that to a GWT map claim. And if we get okay, and the token is valid, we're gonna continue somewhere. Else, if, this uh, if statement don't work so if this ok and token valid don't work here what we're gonna return it's another unitarized response and we're gonna stop here so now if the claim is uh, working I'm gonna get the user ID from um, from the claim ID and I want to map that, so this thing 
not quite sure why but like we need to kind of map it to a, be a float and i want after that to transform that to an in 64 because this is the way inside a user we did say id is going to be in 64. after that here we're going to have our user and now that's going to be from the domain and sorry we didn't create yet this function so what i want is i want to get a function here uh, where we're going to get the user by id it's going to be a pretty simple one i think we have already done the logic for that get this get by username get by email yeah now i think we can just create one by id and we're going to change that also to the user repo so if we go to our domain user repo i want a function called get by id we're going to here receive an id as an int 64 and that's going to return a pointer to a user or an error so now if i go back to my postgres user here i can get get by id Here we have an ID in 64. Finally, it's going to be almost the same logic, but we just change that to be ID now, like that. And now, inside our domain, we have it's almost like two step, and it's done. So in this one, what we're going to do? It's going to be pretty simple. So if we go to the domain user, we're going to have a function here where finally we're gonna say with the, the domain get user by id we're gonna receive an id in 64 return a pointer to a user there is the reason why we kind of duplicate this code is because the, i don't want nothing else than the domain touching whatever we have as a data layer so here if we get a user by ID. If we have an error, we are gonna return nil and the error, else we return the user or nil. So now inside our user here, we can see as yes, that domain that get user by ID. We pass the user ID we get here and we have transformed to an in64. And now here what we're gonna do it's if we have an error I'm gonna return again this error after that else we're gonna just transform our context with value error.context where we're gonna pass finally current user is gonna be the key and we pass the user and finally we serve the new HTTP with finally the new context we have just transformed. That's it. So now to test this, it's gonna be simple. We're gonna jump in the endpoint for now and we're gonna create another route. I don't know, we're gonna call that to do for now. Where well, we're gonna have another um, router like that. And here I'm gonna say use now here I can say with user like that. So use is the way you can pass finally kind of a middleware. And here I'm gonna just say, I don't know, get like that. It was gonna be a funk. And if that work, we're gonna just return uh, what passed to the JSON response. Just yeah, whatever data we have. So for now we're gonna just add on no like response. It's gonna be a map of string string and hello well like that and my JSON response also need a status code and we're gonna say 200 just for now. So now if I restart this code and I go to slash 
let's copy that to do and I do again error in authorize because I have no token at all so now if I came here and I pass my authorization and I pass the one we did before now I get a still in authorize if you have one did I make a mistake that was this one right there Mm, I'm getting for one, one sec, yeah. We're gonna console log the token to make sure. We get a token right there. Perfect. After that, I'm supposed to get my user ID. No, so I'm not getting there. So my API. So when I do token, so the token is not valid. Oh, I know why. I'm sure it's because when I register, I didn't source. So now if I take this one, and now I go to my headers, and now I change this one right there. Really? Now I get a world. So yeah, so that was the issue, just because I, I was, I, I did forget to source the env. You remember what I've done? So source.env. And the thing is, my GWT was not create with uh, the the string, the secret. So finally, when we did the gen token, it didn't get here nothing. So that was an empty one. And finally, when we get the domain and we parse right there, uh, this thing make it uh, not a good one because now at this one we were sourcing. So I'm gonna put the code. In GitHub, I'm gonna link the, uh, the the URL in the description, and I hope you enjoy. In the next one, we're gonna start doing some logic with the to do, and that's gonna make a bit more sense whatever we have done yet. So I hope you enjoy, and we talk in the next one. Bye everyone.